Welcome guys, welcome to this video. In this video we are going to create a login system using PHP. So I am using XAMPP, it's uh, running currently and uh, what we're going to do here is that uh, if I go to the application folder, XAMPP, let's see docs, I have this Sky folder which is uh, currently set to virtual host which is sky.test so currently we don't have any file, it's blank. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a database and then we are going to connect to that database and then we are going to proceed to create a login system. So what I do, I simply say here login system and create. So we have a database now with the name of login system. So I'm going to open the directory for this project. I'm going to select, I'm in docs right now here. I'm going to select sky and open. Now here I'm going to create a file. It is going to be index.php and uh, now along with this file I need to create a directory for database connection or any other configuration file that we might create in coming future. So I create a directory. We can call it config and inside this directory I want to create a file which is going to be db.php. Now this file is going to take uh, the connection to database and we are going to create that connection now. So we need to define a few variables. So first I'm going to start the PHP tags and then I'm going to define the variables. So first is db underscore uh, server and which is going to be equal to localhost. Now then db underscore user. Now we want it to be root by default we get the username root if you change it then you need to change it here as well now by default we don't have any password so db password variable going to be empty and then we have db underscore database now the database we just created a moment ago so we are going to get the same database so this login system name I'm going to copy and paste in here. Now we need to check if this uh, uh, these details are correct and going to connect with the database so we need to make a connection so it's a dollar connection. Now this is a function it takes four uh, parameters so first one by one we are going to pass these variables here. We are successfully connecting so what I do is I simply create a conditional statement here. I say if connection connection successful. Here we say echo connection failed. All right, this is just to see if the things are working or not. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to include this file into our index.php so that we can see this. Uh, we won't have to navigate to db.php in that case. So here in index.php, I will start php tags and end the php tag. And here I'm going to say include. Now I'm in index.php, so it's a main directory. So I need to go inside config. So we're going to say here config slash db.php all right i'm gonna save this now we go to browser here currently we have nothing we refresh the page we get connection successful so uh now we know that our connection is working so we can comment out these these statements because we, just, we don't want to show on our application that uh, we are connected to the database or anything we will be using this variable so whenever we will be querying to database or inserting or fetching data. Now we have the connection set up and uh, the next step is going to be uh, include the HTML and we want to have some navigation to our project so that we can work with the login system. So here I'm going to say HTML and this is uh, the HTML content. Now here we have the title. I'm going to replace it with login system all right we 
we'll be including all our CSS into the head tag and we need to put navigation inside body tag. So here I'm going to create a header. And in this header, I'm going to take the navigation. Now I don't want to create navigation um, custom um, all by ourselves because that will take time and we will have to add CSS. So we can use Bootstrap in this case. So what I do simply, I go here in Google uh, Bootstrap navigation. Now when you search that, you come across the site of Bootstrap. Now you can get the navigation here. You can see the navigations we have. So we can copy this code simply and we can include in our project. This is going to save a lot of time for us. Now we have navigation here. I'm going to indent it a little bit. All right, so that code looks good. Now I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna check our page. So if I go here and refresh, we have our navigation, but the style is not there. So we go back to navigation uh, bootstrap website. There we have getting started. There, if you go and see, you will see the uh, CSS CDN. We can include that. I copy this, go into our project, and in head tag, we are going to put this here. So once I put it there, and we go back to the browser, refresh the page, we have our navigation working as we want them to. So in the navigation, we want to customize our navigation. And before anything, I want to tell you what we need to do here. Uh, I'm going to put this navigation to a separate file so that uh, we can include it on every page uh, as we wish. So what I do, I go here in our project and I'm going to create here a directory and it's going to be includes. You can call anything you like. Uh, I'm calling it includes because I'm going to put all the files in this directory which I'm uh, going to include in our pages. So here I'm going to create a file. It's going to be navigation.php. Now once we have this, we can simply go into the here and I'm going to get our navigation from there. Put in here. All right, save here and we need to include it here. So I say uh, php open and close tags. And inside these, we say include. And now we need to go inside includes directory and then navigation.php. All right, so we are including it. Now let's see if it is working. I refresh the page. We still have navigation there. So in the navigation, what I want to do, I want to uh, remove this disable. We don't need this. We have, if I scroll here, we have home feature pricing. We don't need these all. So we have home here. I'm going to put href to slash so that it brings us to home page. Then I'm going to create a login. All right. So it's going to go to slash login and dot php. We're going to create this file and we won't uh don't want this right now we will be adding more if we need but for now i think that's it so two links are enough now we have nav bar as a so the project title i'm going to say login system and it is also going to get us to home page save this refresh home login yeah all right, so let's proceed. Now we need to work with the uh, login system. So to deal with that, we need to create a form. A form. Now, if you want to, you can change the login system with the logo of your uh, website, of your project, whatever you prefer. So for let's uh, do that. For in this particular case, in navigation, we have this button. And here we have this login system where we are working currently. So I'm going to uh, remove the login and I'm going to put image tag in here. 
and I'm just going to uh, give the source an alt and also the width I want to be 50 pixels and height to be 50 pixels we see that if it's fits fine or not so currently I don't have any images so uh, for that we need to create another directory and that's the more main motto here to show you what we how we need to arrange our files so I create another directory and I call it assets now this assets directory can have further directories so I create a directory CSS so whatever CSS files we are going to include we can include in the CSS folder now in the assets directory I can create another directory with the name of JS so any JavaScript jQuery you be uh, CD and C if you be including or files you be including you will call here not the CDNs. now we need to include an image so for that again inside assets we create a folder images so any project files any project images we can include here so inside these images we need to add an image so I have a image here now what I want to do here is currently it is not transparent so I'm gonna make it transparent first so for that I'm going to go into zox.biz Now the file is transparent I'm going to put into our project so XAMPP then docs. there we have sky inside it we created assets and then images and inside it we want to save it so I save there all right I cross this now if I go to the editor here we have our file I'm just gonna copy the file's name and it's a .png file in here I'm going to we need to provide the path to that file so currently uh, we are in navigation.php which is included in index.php so we need to provide assets slash images slash file name dot png now for seo uh, search engine optimization if you are aware of that uh, if you want your site to be good in Google you might, must provide the alt text uh, related to the content of your uh, page or the image that helps but we, for this project we are not going to do that we're gonna leave it empty so I save this and if I go to the site refresh we have our logo here and it looks fine now let's do this now what we do here is that we create uh, pages directory so we need to create a pages directory so that we whatever pages we want user to go on so it is going to switch accordingly so here in our project next to index.php I'm going to create a directory called pages and currently we want to log in the user so I'm going to create a file with the name of login.php you can name it if you want something else you can do that um, but for me it's fine currently I'm just gonna open the PHP tags here and I'm gonna say echo uh, and I'm gonna say log in that's it simply you can save this now uh, when we go to navigation if you notice we have the slash login.php but it is inside pages so we need to change that so it's going to be pages and let's see how it works so I go to browser I get refresh if I click on login we get to login and uh, the problem is we don't have navigation so we need to make it navigation available to every page so if I go and see the editor in the index page uh, you can see that our layout is something like this and this layout we can use in our uh, login page as well so I'm just gonna copy and paste here the similar so we have the style included we have the database included we have the navigation included so whatever 
content going to be changed it is going to be chained here so we can say here is I'm gonna say here a div and I'm gonna say here h3 and it's going to be home page and I'm just gonna copy the similar way and log in here and this is going to be login login page okay now if we go here refresh we get home page and when we go to login page we get login page now we are getting the config db failed and that's quite obvious because what happened is index.php we called config now if you see the directory structure from index it is config and then db now in uh, login is inside the pages so we need to uh, get out of this directory current directory that is pages and then it goes to config so i save this and we go here refresh we have uh, navigation same thing we need to change with navigation as well so we are including navigation here dot uh, dot dot slash save go here refresh and image go in assets so slash that dash so we have it so and i'm going to say log in user now if i go here login user and the similar value i'm going to align uh, here as well align center now this is login page so we need to have a form so you can say login here and let's create a form here all right so what I'm gonna do I'm going to simply call form tag and here we're gonna say uh, now let's do this we are going to use the pre-made bootstrap forms so this will save much save our time now we want our login and register page to look something like this in styling and it is going to be predefined as it's a bootstrap so you can go to this link is it and yeah, this link is in the description and um, the reason I'm using bootstrap is when you be developing websites bootstrap is very very uh, basic and used a lot and of many websites it is going to be uh, one of the most demanded uh, front-end framework that you need to learn so uh, it's it's not that hard so what you're going to do here is once you are on this particular link you need to go into uh, right click on it and then go into view page source so you, we are going to see here a form that we have and we have all the bootstrap classes already working there so we can copy this form uh, here i'm going to remove our predefined form the form we defined here we're going to say here another div and i'm going to give it a class of row and inside is div with the class of call md4 and inside this div I'm going to put the form now I'm going to indent it a little bit so it looks better all right I'm going to save this now we're going to see if it works fine so we go in login page and refresh we get it here so the offset is not working I think I need to remove the call MD so offset is 4 and yeah now it's centered all right it looks totally fine to me now the similar way what I want to do I want to create the register page as well so for that we need to go into the navigation I'm going to copy this line I'm going to put here and it's going to be reg uh, register and I'm going to say login, it's going to be register.php. Now we need to go into our project, and there inside the pages, we need to create another page. Uh, it's going to be register, or you can call it signup.php. That's going to be similar to login, so just going to copy and paste everything from there, yeah, just like that.
and we will be editing it. So you can see here. So if I go here, refresh, we have register. So if I click there, it goes to uh, pages, pages, register. We need to fix this. So we get home to login, home to register. It's fine. So it says sign up here. We can remove the title from the top. It doesn't look that good. It says similarly from the login page, we can remove uh, this. Let's save this page as well. Go here, go to home, refresh. So we can go login, uh, sign in, and register. Now we don't want this logo, we want our logo in there. So we can simply change this logo. Sure. Now register inside pages, uh, just like the navigation inside includes. I'm hoping it should be working fine. Now let's see the browser. Refresh, we have our logo. Uh, login and register. Now we need to fix this that when we go to login and then to register, it should go to register. But what happens is it goes to uh, pages, pages, and then register. And in our directory, we have we don't have that way. We have it inside pages, then register. So to make our navigation working properly, we need to put dot dot slash here too, and here too, because uh, we are our navigation is inside the includes folder. So it goes one folder out, then it goes into pages, and there are the pages. So one folder out, then pages, and then there is the page. So we save this. I go to the browser, I refresh the page, go to home. Now if I go to login, we can log in, register, home. So it's working as we want it to work. All right, now let's work on our uh, sign up. So we need to edit this form a bit. So here currently in the register.php, we have uh, the remember me. I don't want to do that currently. We have this uh course scope we are going to just going to register the user now here we have sign up then the email address label and the input for email address now we are going to do something like this too so i'm going to separate it so that it's easy to read for you so these are the inputs this is for the email and this is for the password now i'm going to copy and paste to this one here and going to edit it because we need the username and I don't want uh, this one without username so I just put it here name and it's going to be type text and input name is going to be this now we could say here name and placeholder uh, also user name and it is required autofocus all those things are from bootstrap so we don't need to care about that we have the input with the type text that's all matters now if i go here and refresh we have username email and password these three things we need to make our login or user register so if i go to the text editor now here I'm going to say register. Now this form is going to submit and we can remove this for now. We don't need copyright and anything. Now we can submit this form. We can put define the action. Now action going to be to a file which is going to process this form. So we need to create that file. So we can create a directory where we are going to put all the files. Those are going to process our forms. So what I do here, I Next to index.php, I create a directory and I'm going to call it process processes. And inside this processes, uh, we can create the file. So I create another file and it's going to be for registration. We can say sign up uh, process.php. So this is what is going to handle the sign up for uh, the register for our application now if I go to the register here we need to define this path here so I say slash now uh, we are in register.php which is uh, inside the pages so we need to get out of this directory once dot dot dash then we are in the main directory now we need to go into processes 
So we put that. Inside processes, we are going to get this file. I'm going to copy the name. .php and we need to define a method and method going to be for this form is going to be post. Alright, you can define post like this or like this. It's the same thing. So I save that. Now looks like our form is ready. So what we need to do here is I move the I go into here and I start the PHP DAGs. And here we're going to say if is set it's going to check if we are getting a form from submission. So we're going to check here, submit. Now if I go to register here, we have the type submit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to chain the button to input. So I'm going to say here, input, type submit, name going to be submit, and well you're going to be register now we can give this class to it so that we can maintain the styling because it's from bootstrap so we don't need to worry move that now we have our index and we can catch this summit so I post this summit here now if it is summit then we say echo uh, form submitted just to check for now well, let's see what happens. So I go to publication, I refresh the page, and register, and hit register. Uh, we are we have the required set, so we need to put these values. So I'm gonna put anything and any password, and we get form submitted. Now let's process this. So when we get the submit, uh, we need to include our database. So we did that in the index.php, the same way we need to do there in our process. So here inside a process, we need to include the database. So we want to make sure if user is coming from submit by submitting a form only, then include the database. Now again, we are inside a process uh, folder. So we need to go one folder out to reach to the add config directory because we see here it's one folder out so we can save that now we have the access to it now we're going to put some validations here so to work with validations what I'm going to do I'm going to remove these uh, uh, required which is HTML required which is because if we want to check validation through PHP uh, this is going to increase our time so if you want to use them, you can use in your project. But what I do, I simply uh, remove this so that we can work. And the email type going to be text uh, because we want to validate it through PHP, not to, through HTML. It's a good practice to use this type email. But we are checking how to create this uh, sign up with PHP. So I want to show you through PHP. So now, in this case, we're going to get the values. So let's get the values first. So we have three fields. First is uh, user name. And then we have user email. And to get the values, we're going to get to dollar underscore post for each. So, and we are going to pass the names of those fields to these so that we can check now if I go here we gave what names let's check so this input had no name let's pass the name name going to be in the same way uh, and this username we can pass in here now same way we need to pass the name here as well we don't have And the last one going to be the user password. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay, now what we need to do here is we need to put a condition. If uh, empty, and we say username, 
all right so this is going to check if it is empty then we are going to pass uh, an error echo and similar way I'm going to copy this and paste this here here I'm gonna say email password is required okay I missed the columns here all right now let's see if I go here and refresh the page register we get all these break here all these three errors but we want to show these errors here we don't want to show these errors on that next page so what we can do about that is now to see these messages same on to the page where we have our form yeah we want address here not uh, coming to the next page what do we need to do we need to redirect a user when these errors happen so what I can do here is we can simply uh, put here uh, location and we are going to use a header function for that and header and inside it I'm gonna say location okay and it's going to be at the location of the file where we want to user uh, we want to send the user so uh, this is going to be the file where we are here registered on PHP so we get out of this in the pages and slash and inside of register.php now I want to pass an adder and that adder is going to be uh, we can get we can set like the what exactly the adder is like. so I say empty empty name uh, remove this and I'm going to copy this and paste in here as well as here now here it's going to be empty email now here it's going to be empty password so if these happen it's going to uh, send us back now here we can put exit all right let's see what happens so I go to the browser and refresh and when I hit register we get empty name on the top so uh, if I remove for example uh, the exits so if I remove this exit from all these three conditions what is gonna happen is that adder that we are sending we are setting a variable so first time it is going to get this value then this value and then this so a variable going to have only one value inside it so it's going to be overwritten and they're only going to show us this instead of showing all three because we first set that okay and uh, name is empty then email is empty but at last we check the password so this stays inside error so let's see what happens here so what I do I hit register we get error empty password so that's the reason we need to make sure we put the exit so what happens is it is going to check for each field one by one and uh, we are going to get what exactly we are looking for so user will have to fill the name so if I say here it says empty name now we need to check this uh, that this variable is set so that we can show an error so for that what I do here is I go into the uh, register page now here where we have the input uh, name what we can do we can set an alert so I'm gonna say here P tag and I'm gonna give it a class of alert now this is a bootstrap class so uh, not worry about it too much and I'm going to put here the adder so it's going to be I want to show with this uh, when we have the adder showing up uh, for the username so that when we have this on the top it should display here that, that this error happened so what we can do here is we can put here a PHP condition inside this form 
So whenever you be getting value from URL, you will be using get. Now the variable we are getting is error. So we have error and the error. Now, if I go to browser, it has the value empty name. So we can check for this so that if it is, is set and we can say and we can put this into string and we can say it is equal to this empty name. What I want to do, I want to echo or we can simply do this way. We can close the PHP tag and start the PHP tag again. And in between, we can put our HTML. So here it's going to be like this. You will see this kind of code a lot in here and the applications developers uh, do this a lot. So here we are going to say a name is required. All right, I'm going to save this. I'm going to go to browser, home, I'm going to register, hit, and we get name is required. Now this is the red and all this styling. This is from Bootstrap, so don't worry about it. Now we can do it small uh, PHP tag, uh, sorry, HTML tag because it's too big. I'm going to save this and then we go to the browser, register, hit this. Uh, but doesn't align very well. So what I do here is I simply uh, put these adders on the top of this form because we don't want to work a lot on the designing for now. So I'm just going to put it here. All right, so we are setting the adders for yeah, empty email and empty password as well. So the same way we need to show those adders too. So I'm going to just I copy this if and I'm going to say else and then I'm going to paste the if so it's going to be a, uh, else if statement here it's going to check the uh, adder and if it is empty email now it is going to check if it is empty email uh, then it's going to give us the adder email is required now if I go to the browser and refresh and hit register. We get the required name is required. We put the name and then get the email is required. So if you see the code, uh, I'm checking that if is set adder and if adder is this. So we are doing this if is set adder every time, which is not necessary. We can do it only once and then only check these adders. What I can do here is uh, I simply copy this and inside it, I'm gonna say an if condition. So we can remove this is set from these each of uh, conditions. So we are going, just going to check this and we're gonna put this inside it. So we are first checking if, okay, if there is adder, then check if the adder is this. Now here we're gonna copy this and paste it again because this time we are going to check for password. And then it's going to say password is required. All right, now I'm going to go to the browser and refresh. We get email is required. So user puts the uh, name, then puts some email, and then hits register. We get the password is required. And uh, that's how it works. Now we need to check that if the email is right. So if we are on the this page we get that okay user will be putting the values but we want to check if the email type is correct or not so for that we need to uh, put a condition in our process here so if these values are not empty the uh, PHP will process go further so we can say here if uh, not empty and so we want to run this. So we are simply saying that, all right, if every detail that we are looking for is there, then we need to insert the data. And uh, this time we need to 
check the email type before inserting data. So here I'm going to check for that. So uh, checking user email we have here. So we're going to use a filter bar. It's going to be all capital. Validate underscore email. So I want to put it inside a condition, an if condition. So if it is a valid email, we want to uh, proceed. Or and uh, if it is not value uh, valid, so we can do here is if not valid, so we can give the error just like that here and we can say invalid email now when we pass the invalid email we need to check for it so here I can uh, copy and paste the alt save again and this time it's going to be invalid email so if it is equal to invalid email we can say go to the browser and we are going to provide some details. So I'm going to pass name, then an email and a password register. Email is invalid, so it's working as expected. So we have that error coming from the process. So the values are there, it's checking that way. Now, once we have this, well, once everything is clear, we want to insert data. Now, before inserting data, I want to check the data if the data is secure. It's equal to dollar uh, username. Now, we either can do this here, so that uh, that will be uh, make our program faster. For example, I have the dollar username and we can put all the checks all the checks here like this so you put it here and here so I pass it here too and this goes into the now here we are we are setting the variables I'm gonna be again to set the variables in here inside now I need to change email here as well. Okay, so now here I'm going to check for it. So I say strip underscore tags. So this is going to remove if there is any HTML tags included, which is going to make our input from the user quite secure. Now in the password, uh, user might want to add it, so we can remove from there. Uh, and uh, here it's fine. Now we want to pass the another function, mysqli underscore real escape string. All right. Now the same function I want to put here too. Now the password we need to uh, secure it. We need to make it encrypted. Be a function password. We can use MD5, but this is more secure, so it's going to be password underscore hash. And we pass the password, and the second argument is going to be uh, capital password underscore default. So this is going to encrypt it. Now, once we have all these values, it's the time we insert this into the database. So currently, if I go to the database here, I have no data table created. So let's create a table. So I say here, uh, users table, and I want to create four columns. First, I want to pass ID, and it's going to be integer, and it is going to be auto increment, so I can check here. Second is going to be the uh, user underscore name. Now we can give it a text or various characters. 
Now, in this case, I would say raise characters because some users might want to put some uh, characters in their name. You can get a maximum value. I say, let's say 150 characters. Now, we don't need an auto increment on this. It's just going to be on the ID and ID also going to be primary so that every time it's going to be unique and it's going to be uh, incrementing uh, with each entry. Now, we have username, then we have email. Now email is going to have an a corrector, so it's going to be race corrector. I'll say 150, and then we have uh, the time. So we say created underscore add, and I forgot to add the password. So what we can do, we can add one, one column. So I can say go. It adds one. So I say created. It goes here, and here I'll say password. A password can have uh, a string or text, whatever you prefer. I'm going to give a bar chart now, and also 150. Created underscore at. It's going to be timestamp, so the current time when the entry happens. It's going to get the timestamp for that. Now we can set the default values here, but we don't want to set. Uh, I'm not going to set any, but if you want to, you can do that. You can set to null, like if when you put any entry, you are not sure that the user will be adding that particular. Uh, for example, if you want user to add a username, but it's an optional field, you can set it to null. So it's going to be if username is there inserted, otherwise keep it null. So we have our table almost set, so I save. So our table is set. So in the text editor now we need to write our query SQL and I'm going to write a query here so it's going to be insert into users uh, it should match uh, the name user underscore name email and password we don't need to provide ID so uh, here I'm gonna say user underscore name Coma. Then we're gonna put email. We created in the scratch because I did not set any default value. So here I'm going to pass the values. So we have dollar new uh, username. Coma created in the scratch. We need to pass now. So it's going to. Now I add the date and time when this uh, query runs. So this is how it goes. My SQLI underscore query. And we are going to pass the connection. And then the dollar SQL. Now here we are going to set a variable. And we are going to put uh, condition on this so you're gonna say if inserted do this else do this now we're gonna do something like this here so we're gonna put here now here uh, we're gonna say instead of adder we're gonna say success uh, we can set user created and in else we can also put some condition we can say it's going to be adder failed all right now we need to put a check for this so we go here in register i am going to copy the else safe gonna paste here again so we are going to first check the adder uh, the adder if it is equal to this We're gonna say something, or we can say a contact admin or something like that if you want to. Now, also, uh, we, this time we need to check success as well. So, we wrap this everything inside the uh, if we it is get underscore error, so, uh, get error. So, we need to check if it is success this time. So, we need to do here uh, else if dollar underscore get 
and it's going to be uh, success. And if it is success, now we need to pass a condition. So we say if, and we need to check uh, user created, and we get to pass here, and it is going to be uh, just like this. Now I'm going to change this class to success. Uh, user indented a little bit, so save this. All right, now go to the browser and let's register our user. We get to invalid 57. Okay, I paused this. I need to put is set. If it is set, then do this. And then, yeah, now we go to browser again and refresh. So we need to register here. Now I say, okay, uh, my name is Roger. Email is rog at gmail.com. And then password is test. And hit register. We get a user signed up successfully. Now if we go to the database there. We have the entry, password encrypted, time is there but we don't have username and email. Let's see what's gone wrong. All right, guys, so I forgot to add the connection. When you use MySQL library, let's keep string. The first parameter is going to be the connection. The way we added the connection uh, when we here, MySQL query, we added a connection, then the SQL query, the similar way we need to add a connection and then the variable so same way i need to add it wherever we use mysql uh, real escape string so here and we also use it here all right so it should be working now so let's try again so i go to the browser and register page refresh now here i'm gonna put any name and password register user signed up as successfully browse now we have the username, email, and password. Everything working as it's supposed to. We have this login application, so we already got the user signed up. Now we need to make sure once the user signed up, it shows that, okay, you're logged in, and we hide the register option, and we show logout option, and we show some data according to the login user. So to do that, what we need to do, we need to use sessions. Now to deal with sessions, what we need to do, we need to uh, work on a file where we can start a session and that file should be available to all pages. So if you're in our project, we see here our directory structure is something like this. So in register, uh, we are including db file and then the page navigation and then we have all the content the similar way we have in login uh, same structure as well as an index page we have same structure so we can include uh, create a new file and can include after db or we can even do it inside this file it's totally a preference based thing so what i do here as i'm going to so i'm going to create a new file so i'm going to call it header.php and this PHP file only going to do one thing. It is going to, for now, it's going to do only one thing. We will see what else we can do with this. So session underscore start. That's all we want for now. So this is going to start the session. Now this file we need to include uh, everywhere. So uh, this is a header file. Now we already have navigation called or db file so next db we can call it so let's do that so i just go here and we're gonna say includes header.php now this way we need to pass it into login We need to see if we are getting any error or not. Now, if I go to index, we need to pass it there too. 
you know, our index includes directories uh, just next to it. So we don't need to put this. We simply say includes in header. So I'm going to cross this. Now if I go to the browser, refresh, we are not getting any error, then we, this is good. If we are not getting any error, everything is good. So uh, what happens is when the user signed up, we are going to, uh, once this happened, user created. Before this, I want to set a session. So what I do, I say here, dollar score session. And I'm going to pass a user underscore name. And I'm going to put the value of the user. So username. I'm going to pass this value to this. All right. So uh, the username going to set once the uh, logged in successfully happened. Now, then at this moment, we need to go into navigation. And here, I want to wrap the register link with the PHP statement. So what I do here, I say, I simply start a PHP statement and PHP statement and here I'm going to say so we pass here if set so I want to reverse it so that if session username is not set then we want to show the register option and otherwise we want to show it so we're just going to cut this paste in here All right, something like this. And we can even say else. And we can again break the PHP statements here. So uh, we need to show now the logout. So I'm just gonna add that here. We don't have any file for logout right now. I'm just gonna create one, but to show it now. In now to make it work we also need to uh, call the session start here as well and sign up uh, process so I'm gonna say session underscore start alright so now we go again here and refresh the page let's say mark one two three four five register now you can see user signed in and we have log out instead of uh, register and that's great we don't have logout working currently but we are going to do that so uh, this just changed because we are checking uh, the session uh, in the navigation file and here so we got log out now log in it shouldn't be displaying as well because if the user is already logged in so only logout should be there so here let's save this now if i go here and refresh we only have logout and home so now the user can go to the register page now if we have login user and home page we want to show some content based on the information of logged in user so what i do i go into index dot uh, php and we can give some kind of message here so here um, I'm gonna copy and paste the same condition so I'm gonna just gonna copy this and inside it we're gonna put this content so if not set a uh, username then we want to say uh, h3 logged data and if user is logged in, we can say h3 uh, vacuum. Then we can put the username as well. So we can say here uh, PHP DAG echo username and closing PHP DAG. So we should get a username there. So, so refresh, welcome, mark. We can say here you see first 
this is another PHP function. What it is going to do, it is going to make first uh, character uppercase. So if I go here, lock and mark. So that's looks great now. I know.